Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial for mCreator. Uh, today what we're going to cover is the right click event basically procedure. You guys voted for that I believe this week or last week or whatever. You know between last week and this week. So what this basically does is allows cross mod compatibility for allowing people to basically tie in to use right click events similar to how axes basically work with vanilla logs. If you were to right click on a birch tree like that, the stem of it uh, with a any type of axe, it will basically strip the, the log. Now we can do this with amp creator as well and it also works with shovels and other tools as well. Yeah, so basically what I've done is made it cross mod compatible and using some tags and stuff like that. So we'll cover how that all works. So just to demonstrate, if we right click on the block, as you can see, it works as you would expect it to and the tool does break. Let's hop into mCritter and I'll show you how it all works. So oddly enough, the block that we're right clicking on does not have a procedure, nor does the tool itself. We're running it from a external procedure and before we get started, we actually need one thing. We need a internal axe tag. Now you can name it whatever you want. I just kept it internal and external axe for uh, easy understanding. Now internal basically means anything within my own mod. So the mod that we're creating the functionality for external will be for mods that connect to the basically tap into our blocks and be able to use the tool on any verb mod blocks that we want them to write be able to right click on and basically strip the log or any other right click action so external again is mods connecting to your mod internal is your mod itself now for the internal axe tag what we would want to do is we would want to go internal underscore axe or whatever tag name you want and then set the tag namespace to mod and then what we want to do is set the tag type to items now this is important so make sure it's under items and then we want to assign any tools that we want to basically be able to strip the, the the logs and stuff like that so you can just add on to the list here and that would work fine so when you have your tag set up what we want to do is create a global procedure now this procedure is just a r normal procedure element it's not connected to anything and then what you want to do is select your trigger and when your global trigger is under player right click on block so right click block right clicks block pardon me so this one right here and then what we need to do is we need to make a condition so I'll walk you through how to set this up right now so the first thing that we need to do is create a condition we're going to use an if statement and then we're going to need a and statement so we're going to grab a light blue operator from logic and then we're going to add a and and then we're going to external output so it's like aligned like this just so it's a little bit easier to follow and we're going to actually need to duplicate this and then we're going to set this to or and that's going to be important for the part down here so we'll get to that in just a second next thing that we need to do is create a block test so we're going to test for the block and then we're going to get the block so the first one we were back at logic this time we're going to block procedures and we're going to grab get block at and then what we're going to do is go to minecraft components and grab the block that we want or the block selection thing so next we're going to select the unstripped version of the log and then we're going to get that out of the way so now that we have that out of the way what we need to do is create another or statement and we're going to put that at the top right here and we're going to test for a item so we need to get another logic and then we're going to get the item and then what we're going to do is go to entity procedures and then scroll down until we see item in main hand of event slash target entity and then we're going to go back to minecraft components and grab a minecraft item block and we're going to select items and then we're going to 
go and grab the vanilla axe that we have here. So we have the wooden one. We're going to need to duplicate this and we're going to select items again. We're going to select stone. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do that again and we're going to select iron. And then we're going to do that one more time. And then we're going to select gold. And then we're going to duplicate the item test. And then we're going to put the last one here and then we're going to grab diamond. Now if Minecraft decides to update the tools like they did in the nether update, what you would want to do is you would want to expand this and then you would basically move that over here, you would move that and then you would update this one to your next tool. I think they have netherite or something like that in the nether update so you would want to set that one to that but in our case we just want this. So that basically allows support for all vanilla tools right here. The tricky part comes in when we want to add uh, support for custom tools. Let's go down a little bit more. We'll add, go back to logic. We'll grab another light blue operator. We'll set this one to or, make it so it sits like that. And we're also gonna need to go back there again and grab a, another light blue operator and we're gonna duplicate this two times. And we're gonna go back to logic and we're gonna get a true statement. We're gonna plop these down like so. And lastly, what we need to do is we need to go to item procedures and then we need to grab the is provide them item tagged in items tag tags as and then the particular one like that. Now we're going to drop that right here. We're going to actually remove the provided item stack and we're going to grab item in main hand and then we're going to duplicate this two times. So now that we have the important condition stuff out of the way, what's important to basically make it work is if you're using anything under the mod namespace, so like in our tag right here, we have used mod. Now we have to use our mod namespace in order to make it work. Looking at this example up here, what I've basically done is write underscore click underscore tools underscore example is the mod workspace ID. So if we go to workspace and then workspace settings, as you can see here, the mod ID name slash namespace is this one right here. So we would want to copy this uh, by hitting control C. Then you would want to go down to your first one and then you would go control V and then you would want to do the two dots. Uh, I think it's called the colon, so shift and then make sure that it's colon. And then you would want to use your tag name, internal underscore X. And that will be for anything in our mod that we want to link to. Now for using forge external versions of the mod, say other mods connecting by external tags, what we would do is we would add forge colon and then what we would want to do is external axe and that would basically set up the uh, external axe procedure for that. Now the rest is pretty basic stuff so I'll cover that in just a sec uh, actually right now so what we need to do is we need to swing the main hand of the entity so I think that's under enti entity procedures way at the bottom here we're going to swing the main hand of the provided entity then we need to test if the entity is in not in creative mode so we're going to add a if statement then we're going to go to logic and whoop, wrong one logic and then grab a not statement and then we're going to go to player procedures and then we're going to get is event slash target entity in game mode not set. And then we're going to select creative mode. And then what we need to do is deal damage to the item. So we're going to grab this one right here under entity procedures. And then it's deal one damage to provided item. And we're going to remove provided item stack. And we're going to grab the right click or item in main hand procedure from this part right here and we're just going to drop that right there so it gets the item in the main hand and then we're going to play a sound so that's under world data uh, nope pardon me world management and then we're going to add play at and then we're going to put that underneath the if statement and for the strip sound uh, you want to go 0 0.9 and 0 0.85 and that's the sound and pitch for the stripped log. Now the 
actual sound name is called item at dot ax dot stripped. So you'd want to scroll until you find that particular thing there. I'm not gonna worry about it. It's right up there. That's the name of the sound file for the stripped ax version. It's somewhere in that long mass. I'm just gonna leave it at ab abian cave dot cave. So the last thing that we need to do is replace the block. So we're gonna to go to block procedures and then add replace block at and then the coordinates and then we're going to pretty much leave it at its default settings now if you have mbt data you would want to set this if you want to keep it to the keep all the mbt data for that particular block so if you have say mbt tags or anything like that you want to pass over to the new block then make sure to enable that one and we're going to select our stripped version and that's all there is to it it's a little bit of it's a lot to cover, but that's basically all that you need to know. The rest, uh, the blocks are just basic blocks. They're, they don't have any procedures, nor does the item itself. One thing that I should note is if you want to add support for your mod, for a mod that has the external tag support in, what you want to do is go to your, in your third party mod that you're connecting uh, that is not connected to the, the actual mod. You want to go to uh, tag and then you want to go external and then axe and then you want to set, make sure that it's under forge and then items and then you want to set your axe to whatever you want. So if you have a different mod and then you want to connect your mod with that, you can connect it to this uh, using your in the particular one and then you can tie into any mod that uses external axe. So this would basically allow for cross mod compatibility. Now remember that external axe basically is any mods connecting to another mod for the right click thing, right click event. So it's not actually anything part of that. That's why it's not in the workspace here. We just have internal for the mod that you're actually working on and any tags using external will automatically be added support when in your procedure so you don't actually need uh, external axe in your mod in order for it to work unless you're tying to somebody else's external axe so hopefully that helped you guys if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out